Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss notes receivable. Notes receivable and accounts receivable sounds the same. Indeed they do, because they both involve promises to be paid. Promises to be paid from someone. But the key difference lies in the formality in terms of the agreements. Let's explore both notes and accounts receivable using an analogy. Think of account receivable as when a close friend, someone you know, someone you trust, borrows a book from you. There's no formal agreement or any paperwork, just a mutual understanding and trust that your friend, your trusted friend, would return the book soon. This sounds like an account receivable. It's informal. You trust your friend, they would return it. Same thing with an account receivable. You sell something, a goods or a service on credit, and you trust the customer will pay you without asking the customer to sign any agreements. Now, when it comes to notes receivable, think about lending your car for someone you don't know that well, but you want to lend them your car. They want to rent your car for a few days. What will you do under those circumstances? If you're going to lend them the car, what's going to happen is you're going to make them sign some paperwork. A promise to return the car, maybe a promise to repair it if there's any damages, maybe you charge them interest. So there is something else involved beside just trust. It's the legal agreement. There is a formal process when it comes to notes receivable, an agreement that would spell out the exact terms of the repayment, including when will they return the car, how much they will pay in interest. And when it comes to notes, the main difference between notes and accounts receivable is interest because notes is a form of lending. And when you lend money, when you lend something to someone, you expect to be paid. The cost of lending is called interest. So think of notes receivable. It doesn't have to be. Think of it when you are involved in larger amount. That could be one reason. It's a larger amount. You want to finance a larger amount. You don't want to finance it for free. It could be a small amount. It could be a larger amount, but larger amount is more likely. And with a person you don't know, and it means you don't trust their credit worthiness. It ha it's a new relationship between these two parties. Therefore, the party that's lending wants to protect their interests. Another good way to think of it, account receivable are typically between established trusted friends. They, they don't need any paperwork. They already know each other. They trust each other. Notes receivable is used between newly established business. You are dealing with this new customer. You don't know anything about them. What you will do is you will have formal paperwork, structured agreement to start the business. This is what we will discuss in the session notes receivable what are they when are they established how to compute the interest a series of journal entries explaining notes receivable step by step at the end we will work a multiple choice question let's go ahead and discuss notes receivable before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses we cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by looking at how notes receivable works. Well, one use of notes receivable is when one party lends money to another party. So simply put, you lend money. As a result, you have a notes receivable. So when you lend money, you create a note receivable. For example, you give a $10,000 loan. Well, what's going to happen is this. You will debit notes receivable. And specifically, you will have the name of the client, you know, ABC company and you will credit cash this is how notes receivable are created one way is to lend money another way notes receivable is created is when you make a purchase you go to purchase the car or a piece of furniture and you don't have the money you don't have this money what you do then you will sign a note promise to pay the money in the future 
So when the company sells goods and finance the transaction with the note, they create a notes receivable. For example, they sold the car for 15000 to ABC company. They will debit notes receivable and they will credit here sales. Notice the credit is sales because they didn't give out cash. They gave, they provided a sale. Is there a third use of notes receivable? Of course, when an amount is passed due, so simply put, a company made a sale on credit. So they debited account receivable for ABC company and they credited sales for $5,000. Here comes 30 days later. The person that made the purchase don't have money to pay. So what do you do? You swipe their account receivable with their notes receivable. So you remove account receivable, so you remove their account receivable, you credit account receivable, and you debit notes receivable, ABC company. So those are the three scenarios where a notes receivable is created. There could be other circumstances, but those are usually the three circumstances. Simply put, a notes receivable is a form of financing the transaction and it, it will involve interest. So let's take a look at the elements of a note receivable. Okay, so this is a sample, a very sh small sample of a notes receivable. Usually notes receivable, they're pages and pages because what's attached to them are the terms of the lending agreement and usually it's pages and pages, but this, this picture here, this yellow will summarize it. So we have the maker, the person promising to pay in this situation, John Doe. This is called the maker. We have the payee. Payee is Farhat Lectures, who's being paid Farhat Lectures, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The principal amount, John Doe is promising to pay $1,000. The interest rate is 12%, how much interest will be involved. And the maturity date, either specified or on demand. How do we know when's the maturity date? Well, this note is dated July 10th, 20X7. And the person, John Doe, will have to pay 90 days later. So we have to find out how to, how to, figure out the due date of the note. So it can either be specified future date or on demand after 90 days. So this is the notes receivable for John Doe. We debit $1,000. So let's assume this was for a sale. We debit notes receivable John Doe and we credit sales for $1,000. When you have a note, you have to compute two things, the due date and the interest amount. Now the due date on this loan is not giving, July 10th, 90 days later. So how do you count the due date? You exclude the signing day. So you exclude July from the 10th of July. This is when the note was signed. You exclude this date. You start from the 11th till the end of July. That's 21 days, August 30, 31 days, all of September. And you need eight days in October. Therefore, the due date is October the 8th. This is 90 days from July 10th. Now you have to learn how to compute the interest. This is the formula for the interest. You will take the principal amount, which is, which is the original amount of the loan, times the interest rate, times time express and fraction. I call this PIT, principal, interest, and time, PIT. The principal amount times interest times time. Now you have to be careful. What do you mean by fraction of a year? So if you are computing the interest amount for two months, so the fraction of the time is two out of 12. If you're computing the interest in terms of number of days, let's assume 15 out of 360. Why do we use 360? Usually in most textbooks, they use 360. It means 360 days. It's called the banker. But in the real world, there are 365. So when you're completing the homework or you're taking a test, make sure to know, do I use 360 or 365? In most textbooks, they use 360. If it's on some sort of a professional exam, make sure you know whether they use 360 or 365, usually 365. So just make sure you're aware of this. So if you want to compute the interest for 45 days, 45 divided by 360. So it's the time express fraction of a year. So it's the, for example, for this note up there, it's $1,000 times 12% times 90 divided by 360. The interest amount is 30 days. So John Doe will pay $1,030 when this note mature on 
October the 8th. The principal amount plus the $30 of interest. Maturity date is the date that John Doe will have to make the payment. So let's complete this example for John Doe. Initially, we recorded the $1,000 of notes receivable. When John Doe pays the note, they pay $1,030. The company would receive $1,030. We credit the note, $1,000. Now the, the balance is zero. And we record $30 of interest revenue. So the company received the cash plus the interest. $1,000 in cash plus the interest amount. Let's take a look at another example. On September 1st, Sun Company received a 10,000 60 day 8% notes from Alex Smith as a payment on his account receivable of $10,000. And the note is honored. What does honored mean? Well, first, what did we do? Alex owed us $10,000 as an account receivable. Alex don't have the money to pay, so we switched the, the account receivable into a notes receivable. So Alex wanted more time, so we refinance, we refinance his debt. So first we debit notes receivable and we credit the accounts receivable. So we debit the notes receivable. Now we have a 10,000 for Alex and we got rid of his account receivable. Now, compute the interest on the note. Well, it's the principal times interest times time, 10,000 times 8% times 60 divided by 360 rounding, it's $133. So Alex will have to pay us $10,000 and $133. We credit the note, $10,000, therefore Alex is off the hook, and we earned interest revenue, so we increase interest revenue, we increase the note, and we increase the cash of $10,133. Let's take a look at an example where a note is accruing interest. What does accruing interest means? So we could have a note that is established in year one. So we started the note here and it's paid off in year two. What is that going to do? In year one, we are going to accrue interest on this note. Why? Because we held that note from this X till the end of the period. And we're not going to be paid until year two. Therefore, we have to do what? Accrue interest. Let's look at an example. On December 1st, Edwin accepts a 10,000 45 day 6% note from Noah. The year end adjusting entry needs to be made on December 31st to record accrued interest revenue. And the note matures January 15th of the following year. Let's go through it step by step. First, we establish the notes, debit, notes receivable. Let's use a different color. Debit notes receivable for Noah. Noah owes us now $10,000 and credit his accounts receivable because we refinance his debt. Now, the note was issued December 1st. There are 30 days to accrue. 10,000 times 6% times 30 divided by 360. We accrue interest of $50 on December 31st. We debit interest receivable. We credit interest revenue. So now we have two receivables. Now, Noah owes us the $10,000 and Noah owes us $50 for those 30 days in that year. $50 for this period. So we accrued the interest. Now we are going to record the collection of the note and the interest on January 15th. So Noah's going to pay it here. And when they pay, they pay the cash for the full period. So the cash is paid for the full period. So let's first figure out how much Noah will have to pay in cash. 10,000 times 6% times 45 divided by 360. So the $75, this is the cash interest that Noah will have to pay from December 1st till January 15th. That's the cash amount. In addition to the cash amount, Noah will have to pay the $10,000. So let's take a look at the journal entry. Well, Noah will pay us $10,075. 10,000 the original amount and the cash interest of $75. What do we do? We are going to credit Noah's notes receivable of 10,000. Therefore, Noah's notes receivable is down to zero. Also, we have $50 an interest receivable, we are waiting to be paid for it, and we just got paid for it. In addition to that, we have 15 days from January 1st till January 15th, where we accrued interest 
on this note therefore we credit interest revenue 25 so interest revenue goes up interest receivable goes down because we are removing the $50 notes receivable goes down and cash goes up cash goes up and in this example the note was honored what does that mean it means Noah paid off his note on time let's take a look at an example where the note is not honored dishonored and what does that mean dishonored mean the person that's supposed to pay the debtor did not send their payment that they, they, they didn't show up so on May 1st Falcon accept seven thousand dollar 120 20 day 5% note from Sandra as a time extension for her past due account so Falcon did her a favor gave her an additional 120 days to pay at a rate of 5% the due date was August the 29th at that date Sandra dishonored the note it means she never showed up to pay first let's create the note we debit notes receivable and we credit her account receivable gone so the account receivable is gone because in the past we had an account receivable for her in case you're wondering 7,000 and now we credited this accounts receivable account receivable is gone now we have a notes receivable by August the 29th we will compute we will compute our interest it's seven thousand dollar times five percent times 120 divided by 360 rounding the interest is 117 but Sandra never sends her payment never calls never wires the money what entry do we make on the 29th of August here's what we do we will debit account receivable Sandra so we're gonna go back and create an account receivable for Sandra why because the notes is no longer it's a legal agreement and it's no longer valid okay and we're gonna go back and put in her account 7117 we're gonna tell Sandra you owe us 7117 we're gonna remove her note we already did that however we are going to recognize interest revenue of 117 so interest revenue goes up now why are we recognizing interest revenue we earned it okay I understand we didn't get the cash but as far as revenue we earned that revenue now we can claim it we perform the service and what's that service wait for the money and accrue interest we did that we can recognize the revenue and we're gonna try to collect the revenue 117 now what happens if Sandra don't pay her balance very easy everything you learn about the account receivable which is the allowance method how the allowance method works it works with notes receivable but here we're going back to an account receivable therefore we know how to deal with this in case Sandra does not pay and we need to write off the account we should know how to do this because we looked at the allowance before we looked at notes receivable Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. On May 1st, Redwood Company accepts 8,060 day 6% note from a customer as payment for goods sold. How much interest will Redwood earn by the maturity date? It's simply put, do you know how to compute the interest? What's the formula? Principal. Principal. How much is the principal? 8K times 6% 0.06 times 60 and remember divided by 360 remember what I said about the date make sure you follow your book whatever they want you to do is it 360 or 365 and if we perform this computation the answer should be $80 so the answer is $80 what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice practice questions that's gonna help you do what understand this concept better invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe